This is LinkedIn Secrets Part 2. Never send connection invitations. I'm Michael Serkan, and this is a production of PracticalPodcasting.com, the website that teaches you how to build successful professional relationships to succeed in careers and business. You can always find out more of all, more of our LinkedIn secrets as well as, as the brilliant concepts behind podcasting at our practicalpodcasting.com site. You can get all this information and much, much more by joining as a free member and going to our members only area. When you join LinkedIn and you work on LinkedIn, don't be a wallflower. Actively reach out and find people you want to meet. Don't assume that just by filling out your profile and, and making sure you have the right keywords on LinkedIn in your profile that people are going to find you, employers are going to find you, businesses will find you, and you will connect with lots of people. No, you need to actively go out and meet people. That said, you've got to really be careful with invitations. Only invite the people you know to connect with you. Only send, the, only send connection invitations if you actually know the person. And there's one big reason for this is that your account will be suspended if five or more people say they don't know you. So if you're out there sending random invitation requests out to people who, who you really don't have much of a of history with, and if they click that if they say that they don't know you when they receive those invitations, very soon you could find your account blocked. And this is something you don't want to happen. So it's just not worth it sending out invitations to people. In any event, invitations that you send out when you don't even know the person aren't all that useful to you anyway. Instead, there's a lot of other things you can do on LinkedIn. You can communicate without connecting. The, the primary reason people want to connect on LinkedIn is so they can send the messages, be, so that they can actually start communicating with the person. But you don't have to actually connect with somebody in order to communicate with them on LinkedIn. The primary way that you can communicate with other individuals is through groups. If you find someone you know you'd like to talk with, well, check their profile out and see what groups they're a member of, and then go and join one of those groups. And uh, one of the great things about LinkedIn is that you can send messages to anybody who's a member of the same group that you're a member of. So it's a very simple thing to just go and join a group that the, a person you want to communicate with is already a member of. In many cases, if you are just looking for somebody who's in a particular industry or in a particular company, join a group first. Find a group that's about your industry or something and then go and search for people who work for that company in the group. And then you're automatically going to be able to communicate with them because they're in the same group. So you don't have to be connected with someone in order to send them a message. Another great way to connect with people without actually sending them invitation requests is to make a recommendation. If there's somebody who you, who you know and you've done some kind of work with them, well, go and write them a recommendation. Now, I write recommendations liberally. I've written over 200 recommendations on LinkedIn already. It, somebody, one person helped me with my resume once, spent 15 minutes, and I, it was very nice of them to help me, and they didn't charge me. I went and wrote a three-sentence uh, three recommendation for that individual, saying, oh, Sally was so helpful in, in her knowledge of resumes and in helping me with my resume. And the next thing you know, Sally's connected with me, because you can't even accept a recommendation without connecting with the person who sent it. So I don't ask people to connect with me. I just send them a recommendation. And what do you know? People end up connecting back because they have to, to accept the recommendation. And no one declines a recommendation. So let's go on LinkedIn. And we will go to one of my groups. And we'll pick Linked Seattle, which is one a group I run that has... 27,000 members as of right now. And so now that I'm in this group, I this is a group I've already joined. I can go and look for members. And I see these are all the people who are in the group. I can look for people who, let's say, work at Amazon. I typed in a keyword. And now it's pulling up just the people who work at Amazon. And I can send a message to any of these people Let's just go find someone who's not in my first set of connections. Here's somebody who's a second connection. 
see I can send them a message just click on send a message and right now I can be writing Leslie a message and I am not connected to her see there's no need for me to have to be connected to her in order to send a message so let's go through another scenario let's say we want to go and find people who work at NASA and be able to send them a message and I don't have any first contacts with people who are employees of NASA so I'm going to go under the people area search and I'm typing in the word NASA and now I've got a whole bunch of people who work at NASA showing up in in the list and I'm gonna pick Luis Medeiros who I don't know from a hole in the ground and I'm going to go look at his profile here and at the bottom of his profile it shows a whole bunch of groups that he is a member of and look how I can very easily join these groups now some of the alumni groups I likely can't join as well but something like Canon EOS digital photography I could join and so by joining one of these groups this will allow me to connect with him so I can't connect with I likely won't be able to join the Georgia Tech Alumni Association, but I can join groups like this Canon EOS Digital Photography group. And by doing so, I, is all I, I will be able to then send a message to, to this person. And as you can see, I just have to click join right here and I will automatically be submitting a request to join that group. And a lot of groups are open groups and some some aren't and some of these alumni groups likely aren't but things like these camera groups lens and camera reviews many of these will be free for me to be able to join and then the world is my oyster I'm able to communicate with all those people in that group lastly let's look at how to send someone a recommendation this is another great way to connect with people on LinkedIn so I under the profile tab you will see there's an option for recommendations and at the bottom here you can fill out a recommendation for someone and I'm gonna fill out a, a recommendation for Sam Stewart and you'll need to put in the email address as well Sam at Stewart dot com now you do have to have their email address if you're trying to send a recommendation to somebody who you're not even connected to but that's not too hard to get after you've initially communicated with somebody by sending them a message in a group by joining a group and sending them a message and you have started a conversation you can then ask for their email address to, to simplify your communications. I'll do this all the time. When I start communicating with somebody, I will say, hey, would you mind sharing your email address to make it easier to communicate? And they almost always give me their email address. And once I have that, I'm able to go and write a recommendation for the person. And you just select that you're a colleague. Usually I'll just do that and uh, and I'll go forward and, and say, and complete the recommendation and almost everybody accepts recommendations now you want to be truthful you want to you you only want to say things that are act, that are actually true and but almost anybody who's helped you or given you some information you can recommend them I mean even if someone gave you a referral to someone else you could write a two sentence recommendation saying Sam was so helpful in in helping me understand who the right people to contact were at NASA and it this is a very powerful thing people people really appreciate recommendations and and they also feel they have very favorable feelings towards you and will want to help you more in the future this has been a production of practicalpodcasting.com where you can find much more information on how to build successful professional relationships and just go and join as a free member and go to the members only area and make sure to stay tuned for more LinkedIn secrets.